So this walkthrough here, we have a 32 year old female restrained driver uh, at about 40 miles an hour when she was hit uh, head on by another vehicle. Uh, blood pressure is a little bit on the low side, 70 over 50, and heart rate 140 consistent with shock. Um, triage sends her directly back to the resuscitation bay. So like all cases, we'll start with the history. Uh, this one does not have AI enabled because it is an acutely ill trauma patient. And so for this, <clears throat> we have uh, a trauma template that provides a history of present illness um, and then goes straight into exam. First, we want to put the patient on the monitor, get an initial set of vitals. She's hypotensive and tachycardic, so we're going to insert an IV. And I think given that she's a trauma patient um, and my suspicion is that she's bleeding, I think we can give her some fluids, but we should probably also give her some emergency red cells. Um, so we are going to give emergency red cells, which uh, are uncross matched. So we don't need any uh, blood um, clot to the blood bank for that. And we'll see what her blood pressure does. Give her another unit. We're going to assess her airway, breathing and circulation. So it's patent. She's breathing spontaneously. She has thready pulses consistent with um, uh, hemorrhagic shock uh, with capillary refill delayed at uh, greater than four seconds. Disability and exposure. <clears throat> she doesn't have any obvious neurologic deficits. And we now have fully exposed the patient. Uh, she has no obvious deformities, but there's bruising to the right flank. So I'm concerned about intra-abdominal or intrathoracic injury. We're still stuck on C for the ABCs. Her blood pressure is still low. So I'm going to keep going with another unit of cells. And I think at this point, um, we should start thinking about massive transfusion if needed, uh, which would include FFP and platelets. But we can hold off for now. So now let's come up with our differential. Um, so right now, given that we just have by history and the initial exam, flank hematoma, I'm going to go with retroperitoneal hemorrhage. Other possibilities uh, are pulmonary contusion. And liver laceration and splenic laceration. Those are all kind of initial possibilities. Uh, in addition to that, um, she could also have a pelvic fracture. So we'll add that one on. All right, heart rate uh, is still, she still has a positive shock index, meaning that her heart rate is still above her systolic pressure. So we need to work on that. <clears throat> Give one more unit of red cells. And now we can start with some investigations. Typically for a trauma patient, I'd start with an x-ray chest and pelvis in the bay while we work on labs. In addition to uh, the x-rays, we'll also get a fast exam. And I would typically do a lung as well to look for pneumothorax. So fast exam shows no stripe. In other words, no evidence of intraperitoneal bleeding and the ultrasound shows felines at the lung bases bilaterally, which are nonspecific, but could be consistent with pulmonary contusion. Lab work, I think it's reasonable to check an ABG to see how acidotic she is. On a chem panel, um, type and screen for any future blood. Uh, we want a calcium ionized and calcium level since those can drop with massive transfusion. Coag panel, since she's at risk for DIC. Obviously a complete blood count, lactate to monitor our resuscitation and see how high it is concerning for poor peripheral perfusion. We'll get LFTs and troponin to look for blunt injury, a UA to look for any renal injury. And then amongst the extended labs, there's not much here that we need uh, we could check an ethanol level. Um, that's pretty standard for trauma patients if they are brought to a level one trauma center. 
um, as part of the national statistics that are gathered on trauma patients. We need a serum HCG to make sure that imaging is okay for this patient, although the uh, imaging defaults to uh, getting imaging given that she's in an acute life-threatening situation. Okay, so let's do those, see what our labs come back at. So she's acidemic, 7.29. She's got acute renal failure uh, with an elevated creatinine of 1.7. Her bicarb is low, her white blood cell count is up and hematocrit is down, consistent with an acute stress response and acute hemorrhage. Her lactate is six, elevated consistent with her shock presentation. And she is HCG negative, okay. So now we can pursue some more diagnostic imaging. In addition, I noticed that she's a little bit hypoxic. Let's take a look at the x-ray. Okay, initial x-ray looks okay of the chest. Pelvis shows widening of the pubic symphysis, four centimeters diastasis of the right sacroiliac joint. Um, so that's consistent with a pretty big pelvic fracture. So for the pelvic fracture, what I'm going to do uh, is in interventions, I want to put on a pelvic binder. Let's see if we have that in our procedures over here, apply pelvic binder. So that will stabilize the pelvic fracture and prevent hopefully any significant further bleeding. Um, okay, what next? Got to get the oxygen level up. So we're going to give her some oxygen by a non breather. And now let's continue with the exam. Secondary survey, go top to bottom. Abrasion to the left cheek, tenderness to the neck, no C-spine tenderness, cardiac and pulmonary. She's tachycardic. She's breathing quickly. Crackles to the mid lung fields bilaterally, which could be a pulmonary contusion, which might not show up on chest X-ray. Got tenderness diffusely in the lower abdomen. GU, no blood at the urethral meatus. Uh, back and flank exam, severe tenderness to the sacrum, bruising to the right flank. And she has an unstable pelvic fracture. Skin, scattered abrasions, neurologic exam, limited strength testing, but Overall moving extremities, cranial nerves intact, no signs of obvious cord injury, even though that certainly is a possibility. So now let's give her some fentanyl for pain. Let's give her a tetanus because she has multiple abrasions, probably contaminated with soil. Her oxygen levels are now 100%. Can go back toxic pale diaphoretic she's still moaning in pain and now we're going to do some in further investigations we're going to do ct of the abdomen pelvis c-spine because we can't clinically clear head ct and chest ct this will give us pretty much all the data we need so ct abdomen she has an open book pelvic fracture with retroperitoneal bleeding that's the source of her hypotension her CTC spine is normal. Her CT head is normal. And CT chest shows opacities at the right mid and left lingular fields consistent with pulmonary contusion, hence her hypoxia, which we've corrected with oxygen. All right, now it's time to communicate. So she's going to need her <clears throat> retroperitoneal hemorrhage fixed and she's gonna need her pelvis stabilized. That's typically orthopedics. Okay, prepare her for the OR. I'm gonna let general surgery know just cause she's gonna need a tertiary exam even if she doesn't have any obvious uh, other injuries that need to be taken care of right now. All right, it looks like we're pretty good to go. So we're gonna hand her off. We're gonna prep her for the operating room. She has a pulmonary contusion uh, pelvic fracture and looks like I didn't put one in here which is a retro peritoneal hemorrhage. So we really want that one as well. 
and we're going to hand her off and finish.